Well, there's a number of supply side uh, risks that are uh, going to impact the builders and chemicals uh, in the U.S. and China. Um, in both cases, we're relying on brand new technologies that uh, are proven, certainly, but have some inherent risks associated with them. Um, the economic drivers require a large differential between the price of oil and the price of natural gas, and there's significant uh, high dollar capital investments uh, that are meant to pay out over many, many years. And so uh, anything that impacts the capital cost or the fundamental economic drivers, uh, such as the spread between oil and natural gas, or more specifically natural gas liquids, and the spread between oil and coal, uh, such as regulatory risks uh, having to do with uh, uh, carbon dioxide, regulatory risks that might uh, impact the, uh, the, the fracking, hydrofracking, uh, capital risks associated with labor escalation because uh, you know we haven't really built assets in in uh, many of these locations and so the skill sets to do that aren't in place we're going to start to place some pretty high demands and then finally and especially for the United States there's some significant market risks uh, because producers are here are uh, looking at uh, exporting their products into the high growth developing markets so anything that impacts uh, access to market uh, through market channels such as anti-dumping suits uh, or anything that, that might impact uh, regulatory-wise, uh, litigation-wise, uh, uh, access to those markets uh, will uh, increase the risk of investment. Investors are mitigating these risks through a number of different uh, mechanisms. Um, the key is really to understanding the risks, the root causes of the risks, and looking at strategies that they can use. So for example, uh, from a capital investment standpoint, one of the fundamental root causes is the lack of available labor. Uh, that can be mitigated to some degree by changing the structure of the EPC contractor or contract specifically uh, so that you transfer some of the risk over to the EPC uh, company that's building the facility that may be able to handle that risk in a better way. Uh, others from a uh, from a more of a cost of production standpoint where the risk is involved in the difference uh, maintaining a wide differential between the price of oil and coal or the price of oil and natural gas are looking at uh, financial instruments uh, to be able to hedge or mitigate that risk and so there's a there's a number of different ways that producers can uh, tackle each one of these risks independently um, from a market access standpoint for example a um, number of these producers have engaged in partnerships or they have purchased companies in the target markets where they're going to uh, to establish a, a bridge position to be able to push their product to market uh, ahead of and with less risk uh, than, uh, than they had, would have if they just were uh, located in foreign markets trying to export into those developed markets. Well, there's a number of, uh, of these risks that could be uh, accelerated or accentuated um, by how the, the fundamental economy plays out, for example. Uh, all, since chemicals is uh, so closely tied to so many different end users, demand growth is really a function of fundamental and underlying economic activity. And so any uncertainty, uh, any weakness in the economy relative to uh, what is the baseline um, means that there's less total demand growth to, or total rate of demand growth to be able to soak up the incremental supply that's coming on the market. And so as we look at it, uh, how that plays out uh, uh, is very, uh, very critical uh, to how much competition and how, many competitive, how much competitive pressure uh, that comes about as a result of this investment. The higher cost uh, producers in West Europe and in Asia Pacific specifically uh, face uh, a number of, of threats from this low cost production that's coming on stream in China and the United States and they're using a number of strategies to help counteract uh, the, uh, the impact. Uh, a number of the, the strategists within these companies are telling us that they're actively looking at switching their portfolio uh, to focus more on specialty oriented products and in addition to that looking at ways that they can improve their cost position either by increasing their scale or by themselves taking advantage of some of the feedstocks that are coming available out of the United States for specifically um, to be able to uh, 
lower their cost position. Uh, that means some investment in a number of cases for these producers. That's sometimes a very difficult decision if you've got a very uh, older asset, very much older asset. Um, it's difficult to, to put investment in. Um, but they are looking at that. And, and finally, uh, I think there's also uh, a trend whereby uh, uh, foreign producers are looking to invest into uh, the United States and, and into the, the coal regions of China uh, to help reduce their overall cost structure and provide a longer term uh, uh, route uh, to lower cost production uh, that offsets the competitive threats.